Well, uh, give credit to Oregon. Obviously, a really good football team that played very, very well, uh, especially that first half. Uh, very disappointed in uh, uh, results of the first half. I have to take ownership on that as a head coach. Obviously, didn't have enough uh, preparation or execution. Um, you know, I, I really felt good about our work week and, and, you know, the energy from our guys going in. But talked all week about this crew, the way they want to play the game, offense, defense, special teams. When they strike, they strike hard and fast. And uh, to put ourselves in a position to be where we are at the end of the first quarter just was too much to overcome. I do give guys credit to uh, suck it up. And, you know, we talked at halftime. I basically just went into both sides of the ball and the players and just said, hey, uh, kind of treat it like this. We just won the coin toss. We're taking the ball. We're going to play this second half like we're starting this game over. And just uh, I thought our guys really you know, took that to heart and uh, did some things. We just couldn't capitalize any time you have, I believe, two or three opportunities where we walked away with zero points inside the red area. And, and you're not going to win many games, uh, let alone against the number one team in the country. So um, uh, got uh, you know several guys banged up. I don't really know anything update-wise. Uh, a couple guys with uh, head, head issues, a couple guys with some soft tissue things. I don't think there's anything significant. As far as like you know, season ending or anything like that, but we'll, we'll see where we're at. Um, mo have more information on that on Monday. Yeah, probably tackling, right? I think we just got to leverage the ball and get the ball down. We knew 15 was an explosive player. We had to know what, uh, you know where he was on every formation and. I think he was the guy that got that first score, right? Came all the way across from one sideline to the next. Uh, I think our preparation, we have to understand when we're playing and facing a player of that caliber, we just can't give normal answers. We've got to have a, a, a better understanding of what they're trying to do to win the game. So uh, uh, some growing experience there for us uh, on, on how we game plan. And then obviously a quarterback of his stature, he was able to pretty much complete uh, at will um, his passes and was very efficient with the ball on early downs as well as third down. So. Uh, a lot of things that hopefully we'll uh, make corrections and move forward. What I see from Luke? Yeah. Um, you know, Luke is, is a tremendous competitor. Uh, I would like to have come up with some points. Obviously, um, you know, I think that, that interception, there's definitely one that he probably wish he had back. I don't know if he didn't see the coverage there, but uh, he's been so steady for us. We're here where we are today, but a lot uh, because of what he's done. And uh, we'll continue to move forward with him because of that. But. Everybody's got to learn. I think we got to do a better job of protecting him. Uh, you know, making making sure we can give him the answers. If the they bring some pressures, we got to give him an answer so he doesn't have to get hit. Um, and then also, if we can do anything with him to change the pocket or do some things, right? Uh, he's got very good feet. He's very athletic, uh, and, and you know the guys continue to play around him. But I think in our protections, you know, they did do. I know they changed up one pressure today where they'd always. Uh, what we call pop the guy out, right? But they brought him today, a full man, seven man protection, and, and the answers weren't there. And he had to get rid of it in a hurry. Um, and then also, I just think, well, uncharacteristic, there was a couple uh, red area sequences where we broke down on protection as well as in the uh, uh, delivery of the run game. So, yeah, that was, it was frustrating. But again, I was very happy that our guys responded in the second half. And, and you know, we're not trying to get a consolation prize. Uh, but I did tell the guys at halftime, I need to see guys show up and play and compete. and. And thankfully, they did that. You know, uh, I think twofold. Uh, you know, there's, you know, in particular, some of that was in the low red, right? Those are kind of almost two plays, right? Uh, execution. So we got to look at the post from there. We got to change the pocket. We got to do something to uh, to move them. Um, and then also, just I think the execution of the run game down low, like a lot of teams will try to just run the ball in, right? Just rather than have anything in chance in the throw game. And we just, I think there was one time where we ran Josh up inside there, game four or five, and you know maybe we need to maybe make, a, make a close look at the run game as well in the low red. Yeah. You know, I think the, the things that got us to where we are, what we got to go forward with, right? Like it's a, you know, I've said it every week, right? Like whatever our record was, uh, whether we were at, you know, two and one, three and one, four and one. You know, we you know got to a point six and one this past week. We're trying to go one and zero every week. Now we're a six and two football team. Everybody's going to have opinions on what it needs to do, but I think our guys know Minnesota is coming to town and in a in a, a rematch game uh, for us that that um, you know can mean a lot uh, uh, for things down the road. And uh, I think these guys enjoy playing together. It, it definitely hurt them today. You know, you can see it um, at halftime. I could feel it, and I like to the energy they gave coming out of the second half. And then, you know, obviously a lot of long faces in there tonight, as they should be. 
Um, but we'll have, to, we'll have to make sure that Oregon doesn't get us twice, right? We're going to have to do what we have to do on Sunday, um, get a flush, uh, 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 take a jump into Minnesota like we do with every game. Uh, Monday will be a great, a great day for our guys to kind of reset and come back in on Tuesday and get a good work week. How hard is their speed? Yeah, especially in certain positions. Uh, you know, obviously, I'd say overall, universally, you could tell on film, offense, defense, special teams, they, they take a lot of um, uh, 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 pride in they strike. They strike in all three phases, offense, defense, special teams. So um, I think that was obviously very apparent in the first quarter um, and even towards the end of the second, just to put themselves in a position to make multiple scores. Uh, defensively, we uh, obviously didn't have the right answers on, on – uh, putting pressure on and uh, playing this guy, he was just getting the ball out so quickly. Uh, they, were, they weren't going to let you get him, right? And that's something we got to identify and make sure that we're playing that in coverage. Yeah, so Jaheim Clark has been a guy really, um, I would say since fall camps, just been, you know, a guy that's been continually impressive. Um, see where it's coming along. Uh, yeah, when T. Brooks went down, um, when uh, uh, Torrey Cox went out and, and then obviously uh, uh, Caleb Patterson has our top three corners. Uh, those three guys are out of the game before halftime. Those are, those are difficult things to deal. So uh, those guys came in as kind of by committee and then T. Strain also went out. So our backup for Xavier um, went down. That's what brought T. Rooks in there. And then I, 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 I do like the fact that he got that nice pick and made an advancement, had a change, chance to change the game a little bit there. Obviously we couldn't capitalize on it offensively, but. Uh, they did their part, to, or he did his part, especially to make that moment. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I guess we'll we'll take it that. I do know this. I've never had a player get a head injury that was, you know, not targeted, right? So I, I do know it looked like the hit, however that came about, and then I think his helmet hit the ground uh, on uh, on the result of the hit. Uh, uh, so we'll we'll see where it's at. I'm sure I'll get a good explanation. It's just I think that you know I was on that committee that. Started the targeting rule um, back in 2010, 2011, and the idea is to protect our players. And, and I, I know it wasn't malicious by any means. I give credit to Oregon what they did, um, but I, I just I, I, I felt like there was some forearms to the head there that was was hard to take. Thank you.